Hello, I'm Gary Quinn, and welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Live. My guest today is Helena Cardona, a poet, literary translator, actor, and dream analyst. Helena is the recipient of over 20 awards and honors, including a Hemingway grant and the Independent Press and International Book Awards. Her seven books include three bilingual poetry collections and have been translated into 16 languages. As an actor, she stars as Arlette Lindstrom in the feature Karalik, where she won the Vanguard Award for Cinematic Achievement by an actress at the Scotland International Festival of Cinema. She played Fufi in Lassie Hallström's Chocolat. Other films include The Hundred Foot Journey, The Romanoffs, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Mumford, and Jurassic World. Don't go away. I'll be right back with Helena Cardona. Welcome to the show, Helena. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a yes. pleasure. So you have such a wealth of experience. I mean, you were born in Europe. Right. Where was, it was France, right? So yes, I was born in Paris, right. France. Ah, oui, 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 oui. c'est yeah, oui. très bon. <laughs> <laughs> and I was raised all over Europe. So I lived in Switzerland, uh, I lived in Germany, in England, in Wales, in Spain, Italy, and Greece. What a great childhood. <laughs> um, did you find that because you were able to, because I know you speak so many languages fluently. Six. Yes. Did you find that, you know, you were... Uh, able to assimilate things quickly or that you were just savvy to be able to go right into another language? You know, I right away at home, we, we, we had three languages because um, so I was born in Paris and we moved to Geneva right away. So French was the major language at home, the basic one. But my dad being a Spaniard, we also spoke Spanish at home and my mom taught me Greek when I was a child. So we had all three. And then I picked up German right away um, as a child, you know, in Switzerland. And then I went on to study it at the Goethe Institute uh, in Paris. And um, and I got a fellowship to live in Germany and study it more. <laughs> <laughs> and then I picked up Italian later on. And um, so I just grew up, you know, with the languages. And in Switzerland, anyway, everything is written in three, in three languages everywhere. So I think it's a great... Um, uh, gymnastic, you know, it's great gymnastics for the brain. Yeah. And 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 have you found that you know when you were growing up there was a sense of um, a, almost spiritual awakening because your parents were so worldly, uh, or be able to teach you so many different, let's say, cultures. What was what was the inspiration? that got you into the poetry, entertainment, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah, these are, um, you know, the spiritual awakening um, came to me when I was trying to find my way, basically, because I was a math major uh, in high school and in France, it's selection through math, you know. And so I, I got into medical school at 17. And after two years there, I had a breakdown. It just was not for me, not not the way the system is. And that was my spiritual awakening because I almost died. And I wow. realized, you know, there was something else. And, and from then on, that stayed with me, you know. Um, the poetry, I started writing poetry when I was 10, just like that. Um, but it's something that I did not pursue for, for a while, even though I was writing, you know. So, yes, it was a, a, a very multicultural environment, uh, how I grew up. You know, my parents' friends were all from different countries. My dad worked at the UN. And so that was very stimulating. And uh, I was very culturally aware and politically aware uh, as a result of that. And, and what brought you to the United States or entertainment? What was the catalyst? Yeah, the catalyst was that, uh, you know, uh, me, it, it was this process of individuation, basically, of like finding myself and my path and not doing, you know, what was expected of me. And so I decided I, I had to leave Europe and I had to, I mean, I did get a master's <laughs> in American literature because I, I just loved reading and studying and I, I was doing some theater on the side, but I had to leave all of that to to uh, free myself in a way. And so I started over. I moved to New York to 
to train, I uh, graduated from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York and loved it and stayed and, you know, eventually became a, an American citizen as, as well. Wow. Yeah. And, and the first, uh, let's say, acting job, what was, what was that? My first jobs um, were in New York, uh -huh. and I worked for a um, um, few soap operas, uh, Another World. I played an Austrian aristocrat and One Life to Live, and I got uh, a role on Law and Order. And so, and theater. I did some theater as well, and I started doing voiceovers as well in New York. So, yeah. And then how did, uh, because I, I remember Chocolat, yes. uh, the movie, uh, so well, because you were, I mean, it was a, a film that really let's say inspired me yes. and um, I didn't know you then but I remember sitting in the cinema and I was watching Juliette Binoche and you and all others in the film and I was just really touched by uh, because it's kind of that spiritual essence of you know putting the love inside the chocolate yes. <laughs> you create that within yourself and all around you what was it like um, working on that film it looked like it was a, a experience yes. not to forget ever a dream come true correct truly i mean and it starts at the top and so how it started is i had auditioned for the director lasse hallstrom for the uh, cider house rules and i didn't get the job but he loved what i did and he remembered me and i ran into him you know in los angeles at the screening of uh, uh, cider house rules and, and we went for coffee and then he offered me the role. Uh, he said, I have something for you in Chocolat. And um, it was just amazing. It was just everyone, you know, involved in this movie was just terrific from, you know, every single department, the whole cast. It, it was just uh, unbelievable. The locations we shot in France, in a village, Flavigny uh, in Burgundy, uh, not far from Lyon. And then we shot at Shepperton Studios in London and in Bath, in England. Magical, truly. It was wow. just a, an amazing experience. And Leslie Caron was in it, right? She is just the best. I yeah. mean, we became friends. Very classy lady, a class act. You know, she's from the golden age of, of Hollywood, and she's just, um, she was uh, um, just wonderful to get to know as a person as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think what's so interesting is as the evolution of our lives when we meet these extraordinary people uh, or, or have the opportunity to work with them, you really remember they, they brought a different essence, uh, especially the Hollywood royalty from that era. Yes. Um, so that must have been, for, for you, that must have been such an exciting dream. Oh, it, it was. I, I mean, you know, she, she had done all these amazing movies, like uh, musicals, and, and she had worked with the greatest. And, but she was just so grounded and down to earth and just really, really nice. I mean, we've just, you know, stayed in touch. And, um, but everybody, you know, this is the thing, is everybody was treated the same. Wow. Yeah. What did you walk away learning from that experience? That I belong there. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, just remember the feeling. It was just felt at home, you know? Yeah. 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 What does, um, and, and, and feeling at home is really, I believe, part of being authentic in ourselves. Um, what does the soul mean to you? The soul, okay, so, you know, the soul is immortal, is there forever, and the soul is your true essence, and it's really who you are, and you have to be true to yourself, and you have to honor yourself, and live your life in, in such a way that you, you honor yourself, you know, yeah. And I also think that, you know, as we evolve, uh, you know, this lifetime is um, like a school and we have to learn to embrace it in whatever situation you have the opportunity to be in. Um, did you find that, uh, what was your favorite, um, let's say, uh, iconic, I know Chocolat, you couldn't top that, but maybe you could. <laughs> was there another uh, role or job that you said this is in that same caliber? Yeah, uh, I mean, not, in, not uh, exactly like that, but I, I, I was very lucky to work on the movie Serendipity. You know, I, I, 
I was very surprised actually to, to get that role um, of a singer because I'm not really a singer. Uh, but the uh, the director really um, wanted m my voice. It was like um, half song, half spoken, you know. And to work with Peter Chelson, the director, and Alan Silvestri, the composer, was just incredible. I mean, I <laughs> just, uh, yeah. And, and, and they also share, you know, a similar philosophy of life in terms of what is meant for you, comes to you, and like you said, you know, like, I, I think this lifetime is we, we all have a path, um, and we all have uh, a purpose. A purpose, it, absolutely. And you talked about the challenges, and, and they're there, you know, for us to, to learn, they teach us, and so to be grateful for everything, you know, like, for instance, for me, it was a really dark time in, in Paris before I moved to, to New York really really difficult and I'm, I'm grateful for everything because it's what I needed that's what propelled me here and so sometimes it's hard wor while you're going through uh, challenging times you know and, and you have to stay grounded and later on you realize you know the different blessings you know for, for instance like when my both my parents now have passed away and first my mother and that was a long time ago and it was so traumatic both you know both times but my mom it was sudden and she was still young and but what I what it did also is is it, it became also this tremendous gift where I dedicated my books to her and she kept inspiring me you know and 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 coming in my dreams and to visit me and I realized that she's always there you know and so is my dad and and they don't disappear. You know? Well, yeah, I think yeah. the soul never dies. Right. It's always an energy. We are we are energy, yeah. and we're always having breakthroughs, um, and that's why I think every moment is is a new beginning, and we have to not take anything for granted. Um, which I'm so pleased and, and excited about your poetry because you have seven books <laughs> and it's just uh, it's almost like uh, it's it's the energy of you know kind of that roomy vibration of of of, of love and gratitude and um, what was what was the inspiration of the first book yeah well I, I write to to transcend and transmute pain you know into beauty and so um, like I said, I, I dedicated the book um, to, to my mother mostly, uh, to my parents, but also I, um, I used a lot of dreams for that book. It's called Dreaming My Animal Selves. And, um, and I mind the dreams. You know, it's like I'm, I'm really grateful when I, when I receive uh, visitors, you know, in my dreams or, or strange or amazing dreams. And, and I've used many of them and I've turned them into, into poems. Because, and I know you are also a dream analyst. So you break down the dream by the signals or the signs or talk, yeah. talk about yeah. that. So I, I, look at, I look at dreams from from two perspectives at the same time. First, from a Jungian perspective, where everything in the dream is an aspect of you, right? Everything in the universe uh, is a reflection of you. Um, and also a shamanic uh, outlook on the dream as well, where I look at you know the, uh, the meaning of the animals also in that specific way. So the dream brings you a message uh, I'm not talking about just some dreams or just rehashing what happened, you know, during the day or, or if you ate too much or, or whatnot. But, but the dreams that, that we talk about are the dreams that bring you a message. And they there, there's always a solution in every dream. And the solution is the surprise. So you have to look at the dream and see what's unusual and what is it that it's telling you. Because it's basically your subconscious, your inner self talking to you. And so you can um, ask yourself, your inner self a question, you know, before going to sleep. And then you can look at the dream and see, you know, and work with the different elements. So um, also, also, if you happen not to remember the dream. I was just going to say, <laughs> most people don't remember their dreams. Well, yeah, everybody dreams. But if you not always, not everybody always remembers the dream. So if you happen not to remember the dream, you look at the, the waking dream, which is the day you know, that day. And there will be something out of the ordinary that day. There will be something unusual. 
and that'll be the surprise and that'll be what you want to look at does it matter if you dream in color or black and white no <laughs> no and the other thing is um nightmares are important also because it's a way of uh, your inner self, your subconscious, of bringing something to you, t to your consciousness that you're, that you're not, you know, paying attention to. And so, uh, the the trick is to to be able to to look at the dream, you know, because some, sometimes that's so upsetting you don't want to <laughs> revisit them. But really to look at it. Let's say it's an animal pursuing you, and it's to turn around and you know ask the animal what is it that it wants. For instance, you know. And, and then you come to some realization. You know, it's, it's really um, enlightening, I think, yeah. Um, if you look at your life experience, who has inspired you the most? Well, I, I will say my teachers, you know, uh, and they come in different forms, right? But many of my teachers, like I, I went to, to public schools and, and I went to a primary school in a, in a village, for instance, and, and the teachers were extraordinary there, you know. They just, they were so amazing. And my parents as well, you know, and 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 the many teachers I encounter along the way. Um, and then artists, you know, because what's m more inspiring than, than art in, in many ways, just, you know, music, films, theater, um, art paintings you know it's all of that inspires me tremendously and nature is like being in nature is one of the most grounding experiences you know one can have and so for me this being connected to nature is very very important do um, you do any daily rituals uh, as a spiritual practice well yeah I, um, I I have a gratitude journal that I write in every day that I'm what I'm grateful for and yeah that for instance yeah no I think I think also during this last these last three years being grateful for many things has awoken many people or awakened many people <laughs> they were asleep right. uh, and I think that they had the chance to look within for the first time maybe yeah, it's been extraordinary in, in a way. You know, everything has a silver lining. So, um, of course, it was uh, terrific. It was, it was horrific at first, the, um, you know, the impact uh, on, on so many people and, and the lack of uh, preparation, you know, in almost every country. But, but the silver lining is that you, you always find a way. And I think the the fact that people have realized that they can do so much more than they thought they could um, work from home, like, you know, connect virtually with people. For me, I mean, it's been extraordinary because I've been able to to connect virtually with, with a ton of people that I wasn't connected with, to reconnect with people in Europe. Like, everybody wanted to connect that way, you know. And so, so yeah, it's been a reset button in, in many ways in terms of, you know, how we live, how we decide to live our lives, to to look at, at the planet, our environment, you know, what we've done to it, what, what needs to be done. <laughs> why do you think people, because I know people had a reset, but why are people in general sometimes not happy? Oh, many things. It's just, you know, I, I think we... we we always have like a desire for something, right? It's what drives us. I think we're born with it. And it, it, the trick is to find ways to fulfill ourselves, you know? And so not everybody is able to find their ways necessarily or to appreciate what they have, which I think it starts there, you know? Yeah. Exactly. What, what, is, what does suffering mean to you? Some people have silent yes. suffering yeah. where they don't feel connected, they don't feel loved, they don't feel I'm worthy of something or I've not achieved the success that I am supposed to have. What, what, and, and so in yeah. some way they're silent suffering. Yeah, I, I, it can be different for, you know, everybody has their own kind of suffering and I think it's, it's part of the human experience, you know, and in a way, uh, you know, it's um, it's uh, there's a polarity in our lives, right? Like while while we're on this earth in this lifetime, we're gonna experience it all, because 
you know, there's there's no good without bad and there's no joy without suffering. And so it's it's to accept some of it, you know, and then to learn to transcend it, that it's just, it, we, we are, I think, expected to, to go through it. It's part of um, um, the process, you know, of being alive and and, uh, and of living our lives and we, we feel. And so we are going to, you know, experience suffering as well. And then it's really how you, how you deal with it, you know, and how you process it and what do you do with it and how you overcome it and how you move forward. But it's not that it's going to disappear completely. I think that's when you become one with everything, right? Who would you like to meet or work with spiritually or creatively? Oh, there are just so many. I, 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 I <laughs> it was just such a list of, 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 of artists that I would want to work with, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Top two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna like quote some people and leave others out. And I, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's next for you? What's 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 the bucket list that you say I will complete this or I want to manifest this? I would like to manifest more, you know, experiences uh, like the one in Chocolat, you know, uh, to, to continue to be able to experience things like that. Uh, right now, I am, uh, you, you can hear me as Monique in this series called Upload, which is uh, on Amazon Prime, and that was also uh, voicing that character uh, gave me tremendous joy. Um, but things are not linear, so it's it's you know um, at least for me <laughs> it's my experience, and and the detours always bring a lot of uh, richness and fulfillment. So I I do movies and then I I, do, uh, I write books and then I go back to the movies and such. So yeah, more movies like Chocolat, <laughs> <laughs> more books. Um, who knows? You know, uh, expanding into. Um, into other maybe uh, roles in, in film as well. Like I um, don't know if I'll direct one day, but right now I want to, yeah, I love expressing myself as, a, as an actor and I love writing. So right now these two are, are, are the main ones. Well, you are truly a Renaissance woman. <laughs> <laughs> Do you paint? <laughs> I, I don't paint, no. but I enjoy doing the dream work. I enjoy a shamanic work because I, I think it's not just about improving yourself or growing your your consciousness, but I think you yeah you always have to grow in a way you know and learn and and so that's part of it too. All right, answer these one word <laughs> questions. What does love mean? Oh, love. I, I, it's like being embraced in in so much warmth and and support and. You know, there's a kind of bliss and serenity that comes with it, and peace and quiet, and uh, yeah, a sense of well-being. You know, and generosity. God is. God is. God is everywhere. God is within. God, goddess. You know, it's like we are. Uh, we carry that within us, as well. Yes. Um, We're what's all divine and, and everywhere in the, you know, uh, beings like um, humans, animals, but also, I think, you know, rocks, you know, mountains, rivers. Yeah. Heaven is? Heaven is fulfillment and, and love. If you could go back in time and speak to somebody and ask them a question... Who would that be? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I wrote my thesis on Henry James, and I just love his writing so much. And it's it's someone who, who I probably would love to. What would you be. ask him? <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, it's like I I felt such a an affinity with him when I was reading him that I I would almost guess, you know, what the characters would answer one another and such, but. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to think about that. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, your books can be found on Amazon or your website, um, Life in Suspe uh, <laughs> Suspension is out. Life in Suspension. And yes. The Dreaming My uh, Animal Selves is out. And people can go to your website, 
um, which is uh, have it up on the it's screen. It's my name.com. Helen yes. Cardona, H E L E N E C A R D O N A. Or com. they can follow you on Helena Cardona Magic at Instagram. Yes. So I want to thank you for coming in and spending this time with me. It's so great to reconnect with you. And I wish you great success in <laughs> all the new things that are coming to you. Thank and you. it's always such a pleasure. Thank you, Gary. It was <laughs> such a treat being here with you. Thank you for having me. Super. I'm Gary Quinn. Join me for another episode of Ready, Set, Live. Until next time, be well. <laughs>